What's up everybody? Joe White here. Sorry about the camera glare, the lighting. It, deal with it. Um, what a weekend it was. The uh, Grand Theft Auto 6 got leaked. Um, as far as that goes, let me, let me get into that a little bit here. I like the direction it's going in with the Bonnie and Clyde switching between the two. Female character is long overdue. Um, they look good. Yes, it looks like GTA 5, but this build, um, from what we've gathered on the internet, from what people are saying, um, this footage could be up to two years old. So, um, we don't know. I like the way it's going. I like the direction. I feel sorry for the poor schlub who did this, because he's going to go down in flames. But, uh, it's out there. Uh, Rockstar acknowledge that it's real. We'll see where it goes from here. I'm expecting maybe uh, Rockstar's got to get something together probably by the Game Awards. Even if it's just a teaser that says, hey, 2025. I know it's way early, but Rockstar's got to give us something soon. Um, the White Rabbit. So Smackdown, Friday, commercial break. The Jefferson Airplane song White Rabbit plays in the arena. An acapella version. And when the lady says, remember, um, in the song, red light appears over the entryway. There we go. Follow that up on Saturday. They did it at the house show, which is rare because WWE doesn't normally do crap like this at house shows. They did it again at the house show Sunday. And then we go to Raw in San Jose on Monday. Austin Theory is warming up in the back. As he's warming up, there's a little sticker behind him. It was on this side of him. Uh, with a QR code, you scan the QR code. goes to www.com slash come with me. And you click on the play button for the video that's there. White Rabbit jumps down the hole. Plays a game of Hangman. With the, uh... There's a lot to unpack with this. Um, it says, uh, who killed the world? And the answer is, you did. But the first letters, as my roofer unit kicks on, the first letters that the rabbit steps on in the game is D-E-M-O-N, which is demon. Another word for demon, fiend. Go look it up. A synonym. I like synonym. It's my favorite spice. Anyway, a synonym for um, demon is fiend. So, basically then it says, okay, come with me, and the flash is 9.23. Now, it, a lot of people say it looks like an alarm clock or a time. It does. However, when it goes to the white lettering, there's only one dot in the semicolon, so it's a period. And then when it goes to blue, it turns into a semicolon. I'm guessing the one dot is a date, the other dot is a time. At 9.23 yesterday evening during Raw for the uh, Street Profits match, when they went up against the Brawling Brutes, there was a guy holding up a sign with the same QR code walking, um, walking behind where the, where the, between the crowd, that little walkway between the crowd, the floor seats and the uh, upper bowl where it starts. Um. People used to walk across there with signs that they wanted to get on TV back in the day, but they've since quelled that and won't let you walk across there unless you got a ticket. But they let this guy walk across there, and I wish I knew what kind of shirt he was wearing. Um, I couldn't see his t-shirt very well. That may be a clue as well. A lot of speculation. This, this guy is Bray Wyatt. You can tell by the red circle. It's the same red circle that Wyndham has used in his tweets dating all the way back to when the Fiend character very first started. He's used that in his tweets. Um, a lot of people asking, is this Karrion Cross? No, and here is why. We no longer live in an era, era where 180s just happen because Vince McMahon changes his mind every two weeks. Um, Karrion Cross is in an angle with Drew McIntyre he already has his own little supernatural gimmick going on with Scarlet and everything else. 
The only way I can see that this is happening is if he joins Bray Wyatt in his stable. I don't see that happening, though. Um, a lot of people asking, does this mean the characters from the Firefly Funhouse are going to come to life? We're going to have one guy that's the rabbit, another guy is a pig, another guy is a buzzard, another girl is a witch. I don't see that happening. Why would you go... I mean, yes, Karrion Cross was known as the White Rabbit in Lucha Underground. However, I think that if they start calling him the White Rabbit and having him do the White Rabbit gimmick, wouldn't that infringe on some of the Lucha Underground copyrights if they had Karrion Cross do that? Um, another thing... I'm, so I, I don't think... Karrion Cross is going to have anything to do with this. Another thing is the song from Jefferson Airplane, White Rabbit. WWE has a habit of not wanting to pay for music. However, that does not prevent them from playing music in an arena. As long as it's not rebroadcast on WWE TV. However, it has not been broadcast on WWE TV. What WWE is doing, and very shrewdly and smartly, is relying on people using their cell phones, which you should not be doing, because they play a disclaimer you know, before every show that says, you may not videotape and rebroadcast this without express permission by WWE or its broadcast partners. But in this case, they're making an exception. So they're using the song without having to pay for the song. My opinion of this is, is that if you're going to use this song, it's out there. You've used the song, okay? Whether it's you broadcasting or not, people now contribute that song, White Rabbit, by Jefferson Airplane, to you guys, to WWE, to this gimmick. License the goddamn song. The only way this works, in my opinion, is if when, when they do the big reveal at Extreme Rules, which I think it will be at Extreme Rules, they play that song. If you don't play that song after you've already sent it out into the atmosphere, sent it out into your universe, your universe has now picked up on it. If you don't use that song, it's going to make it seem far less than. On the Survivor Series poster, we go to that. They released a poster that has Matt Riddle and Seth Rollins. If you look at the top right-hand corner of the poster, there's a lantern that looks just like the Bray Wyatt lantern. Um, or very similar. The red circle, the hourglass, the, 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 the demon, the white rabbit. This is not the first time, mind you, that Alice in Wonderland references have been made by Bray, Bray Wyatt. There was an episode of the Firefly Funhouse, I believe in October of 2020, where they had the tea party. And Bray Wyatt was wearing the Mad Hatter hat. And Alexa Bliss poisons the rabbit. Rambling rabbit. Because I noticed toward the end, they kept killing off the rabbit. They kept killing off the rambling rabbit. So Alexa Bliss killed him with arsenic. And But Bray Wyatt was the Mad Hatter in that. Had the hat and everything. So it's not the first time. Alice in Wonderland references have been made in, you know, when it comes to in conjunction with, with uh, Bray Wyatt. I think we'll see another teaser on SmackDown. We'll get another QR code in the back. We'll get some more lights flickering on and off. Lights flickered on and off with Alexa Bliss and her match this week against Bailey. I think that if you're going to bring back the Fiend character... You have to pay. You have to pay off this bit with Alexa Bliss. He has not been seen since WrestleMania two years ago, where Alexa Bliss did the Jack in the Box thing and cost him the match pretty much with Orton. Had the black goo dripping down, which I thought was great. I love the supernatural stuff. A lot of people hate it. Like this guy from, I believe it was What Culture or Cultaholic, one of the two British idiot shows with wrestling. I immediately started bashing this and it's like dude go go suck on the teeth of Tony Khan um, but I I like it I like to see where I'm all in on it I, I like to see where it goes I hope they don't mention it at all on TV that's another thing the announcers have not mentioned it at all and nor should they you should let this come and go and 
Never make a fucking allusion to it ever. Ever. Let it be viral. Let it stay viral. Don't don't sit there and try to muddy up the water with it. Um, how he should debut? You need a payoff there with Alexa Bliss. And Alexa Bliss is still carrying around that damn doll. Yes, I know it sells merchandise-wise. It's the only reason why she still has it. But she's, she's stale right now, guys. You may not have liked her when she was doing her own demon bit or her own, you know, her own supernatural bit, but it, it kept her fresh. She's floundering right now. I don't buy her as being a member of this group with Asuka and freaking Bianca Belair. Um, so I think that you do the, the four-way women's match. And, or I think they're doing that four-way women's match for the title at, at Extreme Rules. Um, are they? No, they're doing Bailey versus. Anyway, the, you can have that's that's a Grand Slam. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. You need to have this tie into some. Sorry, I've been tired, guys. I've been driving for eleven hours today. Um, you need to have Alexa Bliss tie into this somehow. Maybe. You know, she's in the ring at Extreme Rules, and the lights go out, and the damn fiend appears before her and kidnaps her, and gets revenge somehow. I don't know. But you need some kind of payoff there. Triple H, this is a new era. If this was the Vince McMahon era, he would probably, this probably wouldn't have been happening, first of all. But if it was the Vince McMahon era up to this point, then... We all know that there would be no mention of Alexa Bliss whatsoever when Bray Wyatt shows back up and just gets swept under the rug like it never happened. Um, but now with Triple H coming in, I think that we're going to see this tie-in. We're going to see a tie-in. Even if it's just like a mention or a nod or something. But I think you have him, you know... He's going to debut at Extreme Rules. I just don't know how. He's not going to be in the world title picture because Roman's not at Extreme Rules. He's at Crown Jewels a week after, and or the month after, um, in October. So I don't know how you, you know, it's weird. He doesn't need a title anyway, but we'll see how it goes. I want to talk about Tony Khan here for a second. Because Tony Khan, speaking of Crown Jewel, did an interview in New York today with some of these New York idiots. And he said that Grand Slam was the crown jewel of their TV product. Like, this is the biggest show that they do for a free TV audience. He said, this is our crown jewel. And not that other BS crown jewel over in Saudi Arabia. You just can't help yourself, can you, Tony? You just can't help yourself. Not that it's... Not that I'm blaming you for taking a knock on it but I think you're just jealous that another bullshit piece of crap country has not offered you 500 million dollars a shot half a billion dollars a shot you know to, or is it 500 million yeah it's 500 million which would be half a billion right again I'm tired but they don't offer you half a billion dollars a shot to go overseas and put on a fucking show for the prince and the do-gooders and the people of Saudi Arabia. Yes, I know, Saudi Arabia is a horrible country. The crown prince killed a reporter for no reason. They do a lot of shady crap. It's all blood money. Yeah, 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 yeah. At the end of the day, if it were you and they offered you to come over there and fucking play bowling with the Saudi prince for half a million dollars or half a billion dollars, you're going to do it. You're going to take the money. I mean, come on. Politically, it hasn't really phased them that much. If you don't like it, don't watch the show. Guess what? They don't care if you don't watch the show. Anyway, because it's Peacock. They're not worried about fucking views. They're worried about goddamn ratings on Mondays and Fridays now. And they're worried about sponsors. And they're worried about TV uh, rights deals. They're not worried about it. what you think of them doing shows in Saudi Arabia. My political preference, your political preference, has nothing to do with it. They're going to be over there, what is this, the third year they're doing it? 
We got seven more to go. Do I think they're going to renew this contract after seven years? No. Do it, is, again, is Saudi Arabia a piece of shit country? It's all blood money, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you're probably right. But the shows are going to happen, so let's get over it. If you want to really get, you know, fired up about something, Tony, take a look at your hair in that video. It looks like you took a piece of roadkill, scraped it off the road, and put it on your damn head. Get a haircut, hippie. Golly, it does. It looks like you took a dog. Like, if somebody ran over a poodle, a black poodle, and then skinned it, and put it on top of Tony Khan's head, without even fluffing it up, just tire marks and all. It's all over the place, man. And he's got the crazy eyes going. The crazy eyes. The Asperger's is kicking in. That's why he can't get a haircut. Because he, he's indecisive with the Asperger's and everything, you know. Somebody's going to daggone message me or do you make fun of bad people with Asperger's. It's a horrible disease. Shut the fuck up already. I'm not making fun of it. I'm telling you that Tony Khan has it. If he doesn't have it, he sure acts like it. But yeah, I mean, the, the, I'm not the first one. Go look at Vince Russo's channel. He's done two videos now of Tony Khan acting all crazy, coming out and stomping his foot, acting like a petulant child who didn't get his way, who didn't get dessert. Vince Russo's right on this. Tony Khan, when he comes out there and he screams, Let's fucking go! Let's go! We got this! We got that! Oh, come on, I'm going to stamp my foot 20 times! This guy is a guy who was never loved by daddy. Papa Khan, Shad Khan. Never loved him as a boy. So now he has our... He, he's relying on our love, the wrestling fans' love, and the love of the wrestlers to uh, quell, to uh, quench that thirst for love that he never got as a child. Russo, I'm going to give you this. You're absolutely right on this. And go watch the two videos that Russo's put out, the compilations. One of them was Tony at these scrums hugging people. The other one is Tony um, coming out during TV tapings to get the crowd riled up and everything. It's, it's fucking hilarious to watch Russo, of all people, rip this dude apart and be right about every single word. He even talks about Tony Khan's hair. Says he looks like a Chia pet. T -t -t Tony, now you can get the new Tony Khan Chia pet. <laughs> oh my god. If, if Tony Khan has a Chia pet, they better just make the eyes this big on it. Ugh. Anyway, folks, if you see a big rig on the road, give us plenty of room. Do not tailgate us. If we need to get over, let us over. If you can't see our mirrors, we can't see you. We'll see you down the road.